Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on Graphic 45's Alice, Alice's Tea Time, which is very hard for me to say for some reason. We're gonna do a, a large twist pop for page one. It can be a large twist pop for page one. So here are the pieces that you're going to need to cut. First, um, you're going to, and this is not very usual for me, you're gonna need some 12 by 12s. So this is six by 12, scored in half. Six by 12, scored in half. And then this is just under 12 inches. And the reason I came up with this kind of wonky size is because the cut aparts that I'm gonna put on here are gonna fit perfectly. <clears throat> Normally, this would be uh, four by 12, and then you'd score at three, six, and nine, but this is just under 12 inches, so it's 11 and seven eighths, 11 and seven eighths this way, and three and seven eighths tall. And again, that's adjusted to fit the cut aparts that come in this collection. So three and seven eighths by 11 and seven eighths. And rather than give you the score lines, what I did was you're just gonna fold it in half and then you're gonna fold those two flaps in half and you're gonna come up with this accordion. Otherwise, I'm giving you measurements in 16th of an inch, which is hard to measure, uh, impossible to measure on uh, a Martha Stewart scoreboard. Eighth of an inch is as small as it goes. So fold it in half, then take the remaining two pieces and fold over, fold over, you wind up with this accordion, okay? So we've got a six by 12, scored in half, three and seven eighths by 11 and seven eighths, folded in half, and then fold those other two flaps. So you've got four equal panels. Now here's the pop-up mechanism itself. It's going to be four by 10. You're gonna place it in your scoreboard and you're gonna score it in half. Put it back in your scoreboard with the 10 inches across the top and you're going to put a tick mark at three and seven, three and seven. Rotate it, 90 degrees, three and seven. Then you're gonna line up those two tick marks either in your scoreboard, and I just did it this way, and then ran my score tool alongside of it. So I just used my ruler, ran right on top of this mat, and created my X. Once you have this done, the scored in half and then your X mark at three and seven, you're gonna pull in these two edges. So it's gonna create kind of this horseshoe shape, okay? Once you do that, go ahead and take your um, score tool and burnish everything down and add tapes to the two top triangles. Now we're gonna pull in our six by 12 which is folded in half. And then we're gonna place this point on the center here and adhere the pop mechanism. So the first thing I'm gonna do, <clears throat> just to make sure I get it centered, is I'm going to put a mark here at three inches. So as I'm placing this, I can make sure I'm right on point. Now I'm not gonna take the tape off the back side. I'm gonna take it off the front side Hold it to that mark, close it, and then while I'm closing it, I'm gonna keep pushing to the top to make sure it's as close as it can get without interfering with the score line. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the tape off the back. Most of you have probably done one of these, maybe not on, the, on this scale. They're usually a little bit smaller uh, for cards, but if not, it's not very difficult. It's just three pieces of paper and a, and a fair amount of folding. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna point that to my tick mark here. I'm gonna hold it in place. And I'm also looking um, across this way. I don't, I don't want it uh, at an angle. I want it as straight as possible. So I'm using my grid line to kind of help me with that and my ruler just to take a look and it looks like I'm slightly askew. Of course, I gotta make sure I've got this down right first. Okay, now I'm gonna try that one more time. It's a little bit of fumbling. You can do it. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So 
Sorry, it was drifting around a little bit. Okay, that's done. Burnish that, burnish that, flip it over. And you can see we now need to do this side. <clears throat> The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open it completely and open this up a little bit. We're going to take the four panel that's been scored in half. We're going to fold in these two sides. And then what we're going to do is look for the midpoint here, which is pretty easy because if you've done everything just right, this basically what you're going to do is you're centering this piece with these two flaps folded and you'll see that they come up to basically the same width just ever so slightly, um, like a sixteenth of an inch narrower, just because this is 11 and 7 eighths instead of 12. If it was a 12 inch, four by 12 inch, it would match exactly. So we're going to line up this center line. Like so. And I'm, I'm looking up and down to make sure my lines are straight. But first I need to get my whole thing straight. Again, I'm, I'm leaning on my um, craft mat to look for angles. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Good, good. Okay, now grab a pencil or a marker. And we're going to mark this side down and this side up. So basically these two areas are going to have adhesive placed on it. So it doesn't really matter if you go one way or the other, it just one's on the top and one's on the bottom. <clears throat> you can also use glue here. Now, if you want to round the corners of this, you would do it right now before you adhere it. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave my angles the way they are. But if you did decide you wanted to do that, you would round these in this open position and then um, do your rounded corners while it's folded and while it's folded. And then when you put it in, it, it works. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to line it up again. I didn't put a tick mark, but I know that I'm centering it um, based on the width of this. Okay. So, that's a little crooked. There we go. Okay, I'm going to remove the tape. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you know what? I'm going to back up. So I'm doing something a little bit different here, and that's because I want all of this paper to be the same as what's on the page. So I'm going to actually undo this real quick. I forgot. I want to actually tape it down to the to the uh, base page <clears throat> and you'll see what I mean in a minute <laughs> it'll be very clear okay let's luckily I use tape so this shouldn't be a big deal okay all right I'm gonna fold that up so I want to install this that's page two on the page like so and then put my designer paper down here and then close it and I had forgotten I had forgotten that I've, I've made the card so many times I had forgotten that's what I was going to do so as you can see you don't really need this big of a panel 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it. It's all going to get covered anyway. So what we're going to do now is let this dry for a second. I'm going to put some tape over this so it doesn't stick. Oops. Like this. So I'm going to close it and basically we're going to install it centered left to right. So let's get a center line. Coming in five inches from the sides. Okay, and the center line on this is three inches. So I'm going to put glue on the back side and adhere it to my base panel, page one. <clears throat> I think I need to clean my tip. Definitely need to clean my tip. Sorry about that, guys. I guess I left it open too long. There we go. Okay, this is just going to go flush to the top of the page centered. Okay, burnish all this into place. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mat this whole page, then we'll adhere this to the mat, the decorative mat. Now I gotta find my mat, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, it was on another table. I am going to use this, which is from the Patterns and Solids, and then I'm also going to use this orange and this checkered and a couple of different ephemera cards, and I think, I think I'm ready to put this in. Let me double check my measurements, make sure I trimmed it. Yeah, I have. So I need to ink it. Glad I remembered. Before I got too far. I'll try not to make that mistake on page uh, page four. Okay, so let's think about this. So this is going to go down. This is going to go like this. I'm going to place a magnet here and underneath here. So I'm going to do that real quick. And that's kind of, it's kind of big, so I think I might do two magnets. So I'm going to put a magnet here. And here. Because once we get all the cards in, it is going to be pretty bulky. Okay. And I'll probably put a decorative strip over it. We'll see. You, you're not going to see it uh, because of the cards, but I don't really want to see the magnets. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is marry those up. So they're paired. Come down here. I had gone back and forth about whether or not I wanted to do this or if I wanted to do um, a flap that, a latch that was going to hold it in place. Now I got to remember what I decided to do. I think I decided to do the other thing. Sorry. You know what? Let's go ahead and do this. I can still do the decorative piece anyway. So I need two pieces of 
wide tape. everything. There we go. All right, now we're ready to add this. So we got some tape to remove and a lot of glue to add. Because I used undo on here and I, I'm impatient, I don't want to wait for it to dry, I'm going to go ahead and apply this with glue and close it and then this piece will be done. Give it a chance to dry. I did not give it enough time. One more time. I'm going to put some weight on it and let it dry. Clean up a little bit and then find the cards that I'm going to apply to this. I did something wrong. Oh, this is uh, this is not supposed to be adhered. Oh, you guys, I sorry, I'm making such a mess. I had taken off these three strips to apply this, and when I closed it, <laughs> I'd covered these strips, but not these. So that was just a dumb mistake. This should not be this. Yeah. Yep, yep. So I gotta remove these. These belong on here. <laughs> Let me use my spatula. Okay, so you should you should have three here and three here. And then this will glue down and stay down because I was, every time I opened it up, it was pulling against this tape, which was supposed to be covered. 
got ahead of myself. Oh well, if this is super confusing, go to page eight. It's the same thing. And all the lessons that I'm learning right now will be incorporated <laughs> into page eight. But as you can see, there's always a workaround. There's always a fix. Okay, now, now I'm gonna put some adhesive on here and it'll actually stick. I'm wearing out my designer paper. This stuff is a miracle, I swear. It has saved me hours of frustration. Because I can just undo it. There, look, it stayed like it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish it really good. Since I had to fight it. Okay, now back to applying this. So you're going to fold in these two. That center section needs to be lined up. Um, so you're basically lining these corners into these corners. And I'm going to use tape and glue over here and just tape over here. <clears throat> And these lines are just where you're stopping your adhesive, whether it's wet or dry adhesive. <clears throat> okay, there's one side. can't use tape because the undo is not dry. So we've got the top and the bottom, top and the bottom. Okay, we're going to train that a little bit. Burnish everything. Okay. I don't know why. I think my strip down here is a little bit too wide, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna actually wind up hand trimming that. So the this should have been, I said it was four by twelve or four by ten. It should have been three and seven eighths by ten, three and seven eighths. Man, I've made a mess of this page, guys. Sorry about that. So the next thing we're going to do is add our, our bits. So that's going to go on the cover. You are my cup of tea. I'm late, Alice, and then it's tea time. So that's how I'm going to apply these. And these should fit just perfectly. And like I said, I'm going to have to hand trim down here. Or I could even just use a decorative strip to cover some of that up. I haven't decided. And as you can see, even when it's in the full open position, there's a lot of room for photos down here. 
or a photograph or some journaling, memorabilia. <clears throat> there we go. Now the final piece is going to be tea party and I'm actually going to use this where it says you're invited and I think that makes for a beautiful layout. And this is four by six. And I'm going to trim it down just a little bit so I've got a nice even border. And when I say a little bit, I think it was just like a sixteenth of an inch. Yep. Ink. I'm looking for my ink. Here it is. I didn't recognize it upside down. see how are we doing okay again if this is really confusing go to page eight I will have incorporated all my lessons learned it'll be a much smoother install and then you can just come back to this one for the designer paper choices There we go. So I'm going to change, well, while we're all here, I'm going to change the um, pop mechanism measurement so it should be an eighth of an inch uh, narrower instead of four inches. It should be three and seven inches. It should be the same width as the card or thinner, but not thicker. So let me pull up my cut list and make sure I get that changed. Sometimes I'll change stuff on the fly and then forget. Uh, okay. There it is, three and seven eighths by 10. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put in parentheses or width of pop up. So if you decide to go wider here, just make sure that the underlying pop mechanism is narrower or, but not wider, okay? All right, so that's it. I am gonna come through and trim this. I just, I'll come back to that. Hopefully you guys don't make that mistake. And then for the top, I forgot what I was gonna do. I think I was gonna do this, yeah. Okay, so this is from the Patterns and Solids. I need to trim it down for a six by six panel. Yeah, you definitely need two magnets. I can see it's, this magnet should be further out. So I should have put the magnets a little further to, to the corner. This one actually was out far enough. This one needs to be out farther because all the cards are stacked right here. So I'm probably gonna wind up moving that offline too. Like I said, if this is driving you crazy, go to page eight. I get it. As much as I try to mock up and get ready for this, if it's something I haven't done before, um, I, I tend to make changes on the fly and I apologize. I did mock it up, but I didn't mock it up with any designer paper, so that's why I forgot and <laughs> glued it down right away. And originally I thought I was gonna pull a flap up here for a magnet, which could still be done, but. I think I'm liking the way this comes together cleanly with the magnets underneath. Okay. So the next thing I was going to do was add this stripe and this. So this needs to be back with black cardstock. And I'm just digging through my trash because I always have something left. 
I'm going to trim this down. Take a little more off. I think I'm going to make this a little bit narrower. It's currently just over three. I'm going to make it three inches. I'm going to put some black cardstock behind it and then I'm going to um, either put a fishtail or a point. I'm not sure. But. Let's get some ink on it first. I think I, I think I like a fish tail. Yeah. So I'm just laying it here trying to decide how deep I want my fish tail and I think it's going to be right about there. So let's find the center. Wow, I got it right on the center. That's shocking. <laughs> That's three. Okay, so you just want to um, do a straight cut from the top dot to the bottom dot. And actually, I'm going to turn this around so it's closer to me and use my steel ruler. I'm just going to draw it straight down, cut that, there we go. And once you do that, then it's just very easy to go from the corner to, to that center line, or at least I think it is. <laughs> you could use a decorative um, die use any number of things to do this I try to, to do keep it as simple as possible so that I assume that you guys have most of these tools like a straight edge right not everybody has dies okay I like it okay so I'm gonna go ahead and mat this with black and I'll do the same thing and trim it out so I'll be right back okay I uh, just basically trimmed out a rectangle. I'm going to lay this down before I trim the tail, fi the fish tail on it. Okay. 
know why I can't pick anything up, but my fingers aren't working. This one's a little trickier because you always want to cut away from the center. And I'm left-handed, so I don't want it doesn't want I don't want to do it this way. <laughs> One side's gonna be easier than the other. It's just the way it is. You could also use a pair of scissors as I can I can see that the paper shifted a little on me. It's a little wider on the bottom. So I might come back through and trim that one more time. It's a little too fat. That looks a little straighter. just going to eyeball it. It's going to go center here and then we are going to add this. I'm going to apply the glue while it's laying here so I know where to stop. I like it a little lower. What do you guys think? I'm trying to decide if I want to elevate it with some chipboard. Let's see. <clears throat> I like it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to elevate it with some chipboard. <clears throat> I just use whatever's left over after I make my albums for this. I have a whole drawer full of just bits. What do you guys think? I like it. So I got a couple things I'm going to tweak. I'm going to shift my magnets out as far as I can go without revealing them. And then this, this panel down here needs to be um, an eighth inch narrower. And that's it. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with it. I like the papers that I picked for this design. Every once in a while it wants to get hung up. I don't know why. There it goes. So the, you'll have to open and close it a few times and it sort of trains the paper to behave but I like it. Thanks everybody. Stephanie from Scrap and Create. Be back soon.